So having a look at the Behringer 1204FX mixer today. This is a simple mixer, but its components are similar to larger desks. This will be a good starting point for us to understand how a mixer works. First, we're gonna have a look at the mono channel strip and the inputs. There are two inputs, an XLR input, usually used for microphones, and a quarter inch TRS, or tip ring sleeve, balanced or unbalanced input. So this is a mono input, you can plug things like CD, tape, etc. in here. You can only use either the XLR or the quarter inch input. You cannot use both at the same time. As you can see in channel one, I've got a microphone input and in channel two, I've got a phone plugged in where I'll be playing music from. Something worth noting, if you've got a stereo signal, you don't want to put it into this mono section. You want to use the two stereo inputs on the stereo channels. So the best way to import a stereo signal is to have a cable that has two separate mono feeds that you can put in one for the left and one for the right into a stereo channel. After the input connections, there's a low cut switch. This can be either up or it can be down. What it does, it rolls off the frequencies lower than 75 hertz. The easy way to remember, a subby usually runs around about 80 hertz. So think of this as things that you don't want bleeding into the subbies. So for example, you can take it off music, you can take the filter off bass guitar, and you can take the filter off drums. On the microphone, you definitely want it on. It will help get rid of some of the handling noise. The next dial we look at is the trim. This is probably the most important and hardest thing to understand on a mixer. This adjusts the input level so that your device doesn't distort. The key is to find the maximum setting of this dial where your input doesn't distort. To do that, you need to input the loudest signal you can. If it's a microphone, ask the person to sing as loud as they will during their performance. On each channel strip, there's a solo button. Press it and the red light above it will come on. This indicates what channel you'll be listening to when you set the gain. Press the solo button on the channel that you want to set the gain for. Only set the gain on one channel at a time. Now you can use the lead meters to set your input gain. There's two modes on this display. Currently we have it in solo or normal mode. We want it to put it into PFL, so pre-fader listen. So engage the pre-fader listen button and now that we've only got one channel light lights up, We've got lights that go from minus 20 to zero, then to plus 10. We want to set our volume at zero. So while checking, keep turning the microphone gain up and you'll hear it getting louder and louder. So now there's quite a bit of noise. I'm going over the zero mark, so I've got to come back down. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. So most of the time when I talk, it's up around the zero mark. So that's what we want. So we need to remember that we can't turn it up any more than its current location. The slider is at zero on channel one, but on channel two and three, the sliders are too far down. That's because the input gain is too high, even though it's not clipping. So we can drop the input gain on these two channels by turning the gain knob to the left until we can position both sliders at the zero position. Just remember at any stage, if you have to increase the volume back up, you need to PFL the channel and make sure you don't clip as you turn the gain up. We've got three EQs that we can adjust, a high, a mid, and a low. It is preferable just to make minor adjustments to each EQ band, because the more you adjust, the more it may sound unnatural. The high EQ works at 12 kilohertz, and this will adjust the very high tones, sort of like the tones you'd hear when a cymbal is hit, or the sibilance in your voice. So if we wind up the high, you should start to hear a difference. You'll hear the very high frequencies get sharper and sharper. If we roll that off, the very high frequencies will be cut off. If you roll too much of the high frequency off, you may kill the sound altogether. We'll set it back to zero. The mid EQ adjusts the frequency at two and a half kilohertz. This will, if you boost it, it should make the voice just pop up a little bit from the mix, just to give it a little bit of brightness. So if we put a lot on there, you can hear it's uh, very sharp, but it's not the tinny sharp of the highs. 
If we roll that off, you'll see that a lot of the middle has gone and you end up with just the high um, coming through and the lows. This could be good if uh, maybe for a female singer, uh, might be a bit on the scratchy side. You might be able to um, soften her voice just by cutting just a small amount. We'll roll that back to zero. The low EQ is at 80 hertz. As previously mentioned, that's about where your subby works. So the more bass that you roll on, the more this will actually come out your subbies if you've got a separate set of subwoofers. We'll return that to zero. Now I'll have a listen to the EQ effect over music. So let's try and make an adjustment to the EQ and see what the music sounds like. Of course your ears are the best guide to tell you when it's sounding correct. Next we have the auxiliary bus 1, the auxiliary bus 2 which is the FX channel. A good use for auxiliary 1 is to run your monitors. You can dial up on each channel how much volume you want of each channel to end up into the monitor mix. There's also a switch here that's got labelled pre. If this switch is depressed, what happens is the monitors get a signal no matter where the sliders are. So if the sliders are off and it's in pre-slider mode, you get a signal through no matter where your sliders are. But it's an advantage in a live concert situation if you actually have them post fader. The benefit of that will be when you pull your sliders down, not only will it drop the volume at the front, it will stop the microphone on stage from being able to feed back through the monitors. To wire in the auxiliary to your fallbacks, you'll probably need an adapter cable. There'll be a quarter inch plug one side and the standard XLR the other. Plug that into aux one send. Plug the other end into your monitors. So we'll be using AUX1 to send a signal to our monitors. We'll be using AUX2 as the effects, internal effects controls. So we won't be patching that in. You can use these auxiliary ports to drive to external devices, uh, such as compressors, things like that. Uh, graphic equalizer, you can send the signal out and then when the signal comes back, you return it into these two ports here. Or if it's a stereo return, uh, you return it into these two. We're going to be listening now through the headphone jack. If we press the solo button, we can now hear the music that is being sent onto auxiliary one. So at this point in time, there's no signal on the aux one bus. We have to turn up the aux one send on one of the channels to create a signal. Adjust the aux one send so that it doesn't peak. Remember, we are listening through the headphones, so we are only hearing what goes out aux one which we will route through to our monitors. The pre button is not depressed, so when we drop the master slider, the volume also drops on the auxiliary channel. So if you want to set up the monitors so the microphones on stage are always live through the monitor, press the pre button and then you'll notice there's always a signal through to aux one, no matter where the fader slider is. Once you've added all your channels to the AUX1, control the overall volume being sent to your monitors via the AUX Send 1 knob. Keep an eye on the LED level display to ensure you don't clip. If you're using AUX1 to send a signal to the effects unit, the returns from that unit will come in here. To control the volume of the stereo returns, you use these two volume knobs. AUX2 is an internal effects channel. 
To send a signal from the channel to the AUX2 effects bus, increase this dial. I've currently got it set straight up and down at the zero mark. You'll also need to set the AUX2 send level. Rotate this dial and keep an eye on the meter. Check one, two, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Just like setting the channel gain, we want to make sure when we send the signal to the effects unit, we do not create clipping. Check the lead meter to ensure that the clip light doesn't come on. Check one, two, one, two. You can also use the solo button and set the level meters into PFL mode. Check one, two to check your signal. Check one, two, check one, two. Another thing to keep in mind, the more channels that you add to the effects bus will increase your input. Now to apply the effects to the channel so that you can hear it, rotate this dial and you'll hear the effects start to come on. The more you rotate, the thicker the effect is. Press the button and it'll alternate between the main mix and the effects will now be sending out alternate three and four. So if you can't hear the effects, just make sure that button is correct. To select a different effect, use the program dial knob. Press down on the button to activate. Then check the signal. Check one, check two. Check, check one. Check, check one, two. One, two, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two, two. 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 One, 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 two, one, two, one, two. Check, 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 one, check, check, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. A good tip for live music. On your main vocalist, turn the effects down a little. If you've got backing singers, turn their channels up slightly. Next we have the pan knob. Turn the knob right to send the signal to the right hand channel of the stereo output. Turn the knob to the left to send the audio out through the left side of the stereo channel. The next button below will mute the channel. While the button is up, you'll be able to hear the output when you push the slider up. When muted, the whole channel is silent. The output is actually redirected to the alternative 3-4 output on the back of the mixer. Next we have the channel slider volume. This controls the volume of the channel. Check one, two, check one, two, one, two, one, two. Ideally, this should be set around the zero mark, giving you a little bit of room above and below that you can control the volume of the sound. We've already spoken about the solo button. We use that to listen to this individual track. To use the stereo channel, we're gonna use a plug that's got an eighth inch stereo plug one end and two quarter inch mono plugs the other. We'll plug the 8th inch stereo plug into your phone or MP3 player and the 2 quarter inch mono plugs we'll put into the left and right inputs. Now to start playing some music on your phone or MP3 player and we'll turn up the volume on the channel. The push button at the top of the channel strip is similar to the gain knob although there's only two settings. Press the channel's PFL button and set the level indicators into PFL mode. Check the levels on both settings of the switch. As we can see, the levels are that low, they don't register. So we're going to have to increase the volume on our phone or MP3 player. Check the settings for both switch positions. Go with the one that gives you the best levels without clipping. To use the CD or tape input, we're going to use a cable that's got a 1 8 stereo plug one end and two RCAs the other. Press the button labelled CD Tape to Main. The only control over levels is from your input device. If you want to record your event to tape or a media recorder, connect two RCOs to the tape output and the other ends to suit your recording device. Now everything that is sent out the main mix will be recorded. Check. Check one. Check. Check one. Check. We've already spoken about using the headphones to listen to each individual channel. Press the main mix button. Wind the headphone volume up to a suitable level to have a listen to the output being sent to the speakers. Check the lead level meter to make sure the main mix doesn't clip. Turn the main mix off. 
Now listen to alternate three and four. Press the mute button. Push the alternate three and four sliders up to hear the music. Reset the buttons to their default locations. Now press CD tape to listen to the CD tape input. The foot switch jack allows you to change the program of the effects unit remotely via foot pedal. Along the back we have the power input cable. Use an XLR cable to connect the main outputs to your speakers, the power on switch and the phantom on switch. Only turn the phantom power on if your microphones require phantom power. The ALT 3 and 4 outputs are unbalanced. You could use these outputs as a subgroup into another mixer. The control room outputs are normally connected to monitor speakers housed in a control room for a recording situation. Well that's the end of the overview for the Behringer Xenix 1204 FX mixer. Hopefully it's given you a better understanding of how this mixer works.